Welcome to Boss Bites, the show where we make great food inspired by great video games. My name's Allie, and here's my chef friend, Jen. Hey. Today we're gonna to be making a dish inspired by Animal Crossing, which is one of my favorite games, and there's so much you could run around and do. You could catch bugs, fish, you could pay off your mortgage. God knows why you would wanna do that. Um, but I think we're making something uh, with sea bass today, Jen, is that true? More like C plus. And some apple, fennel, shallot, slaw, and a pear and almond tartlet for dessert. All right, let's get started. But first. For the pear and almond tartlet, all we'll need is two cans of pear halves, a store-bought rolled up pie crust, a quarter cup of raw sugar, a box of almond paste, one egg, and one tablespoon of heavy cream. First off, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. This baking temp is usually used for anything with a crust. There will be no need to shake down any pear trees on your island today. Just grab those canned pear halves and cut them into quarter inch thick slices. We're opting for slicing instead of dicing the pears in order to keep that pear shape. With the pear slices to the side, we're going to move on to the crust. Roll out the pie crust dough into a flat circle, and with a six inch cake circle cutter, we're gonna cut two circles, just about the size of Tom Nook's eyes. So I like to get right to the edge, cut my little circle out, boom. Now I'm gonna have some overlap. I'm gonna remove this excess, take some of this out, and I'll just kind of fill in that hole. To glue the pieces together, whisk one egg and one tablespoon of heavy cream and then apply it with the brush onto the pie crust bits to mend any incomplete crust circles. Place the crust circles to the side and now let's focus on the tartlet filling. Grab your almond paste and roll it out flat. With a four inch cake circle cutter, cut out the round for each circle of crust that you're baking. Place one of those almond paste circles on the center of the crust circles. Bring over your sliced pears from earlier and layer them on top of each almond paste circle. With our filling done, we're going to start shaping this tartlet. We first have to apply egg wash on the rim of each circle to help glue our upcoming folds. Once that's done, pinch the rim of the dough circle, fold, and repeat as shown. After the final fold, gently push in on the dough folds to help encase everything inside. Go ahead and slather some egg wash on those dough folds to help maintain them, and for the finishing touch, sprinkle some sugar on top. Shiny and chrome. Put the circles into a baking pan and bake for 20 to 25 minutes or until the tartlet is golden brown on top. Just enough time to check in with each one of your lovely villagers. Where's a flora when I need her? For the apple fennel shallot slaw, all you're gonna need is one apple, one fennel, one shallot, two teaspoons of lemon juice, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, black pepper, salt, and two teaspoons of olive oil. With the shallot, we're now going to cut off the non-root end and peel back those outer layers with a paring knife. This is a chef's knife. It has a curve which allows you to do this back and forth. So then I'm going to make a claw movement, and my knuckles are going to guard my fingers. I got my guard, and now I'm going to just do this downward motion, sliding my fingers back, and now I'm turning it over because I'm getting close to my fingers. Let me just chop that up. Moving on to the fennel, we are only going to be working with the Baba Boy here, so go ahead and cut off the fennel stalks and save them for later to use as a garnish. With the fennel bulb, slice it in half and then chop one half of the bulb into thin slices. Because fennel has a strong anise or licorice flavor, we're only gonna use half of the bulb to sweeten up the dish. 
Going back to our native fruits at Animal Crossing, grab one apple and then proceed to slice the apple into quarters. Core the apple with a paring knife to remove any pesky seeds. I'm cutting these into long guys, long guys. Cutting these into long slices boys. and then I'm going to cut them into long guys like a julienne cut. We're gonna stack these slices up and I'm gonna just, whoops, be careful and cut matchstick cuts. Be very careful. It's time to bring everything together for this slaw. Combine the shallot slices, fennel slices, and apple slices into a single bowl. For our slaw dressing, add two teaspoons of lemon juice, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, and two teaspoons of olive oil, and a pinch of salt and pepper. I like to mix slaw with my hand and kind of squeeze the ingredients and get that dressing into it. Just uh, make sure you wash your hands before and after. <laughs> And now for our final dish, sea bass. For the sea bass fillets, all you're going to need are, yep, you pretty much guessed it, two sea bass fillets, salt, pepper, and olive oil. Examine the fillets to see if there are any leftover bones and scales. So I have some uh, kitchen tweezers here that I use specifically for these kinds of instances. Pull with the grain, you don't want to pull up. You're gonna ruin that flesh giving the uh, sea bass some surgery, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just gonna quickly turn these over and see if there are any scales also that my fishmonger may have forgotten. It's good to not cut on the side of the skin. It's, you're gonna get a lot of resistance. Cut against the flesh. Find out where you need to go and just cut through there. So there we go, we have our deboned and descaled sea bass fillets. On a medium hot pan, add some olive oil. You can now go ahead and season the fillets with salt and pepper. A good way to check on whether it's hot enough is to look for little ripples in the oil as you move the pan. Much like a frustrated villager catching their 10th sea bass in a row, you're gonna wanna release that boyo from whence it came. I love that noise so much. <laughs> I'm going to now salt and pepper the other side. You can see how it's getting cooked on the edges here. If you're not really sure, you can also check to see if I'm brown on the bottom yet. Now I see a little bit of an opaque coming through, and especially on the sides, right by where the skin is attaching, I'm gonna now flip. Ooh, am I? And there is our sea bass filet. You can see it's kind of flaking. We're pretty much done. You can kind of shake your pan a little. And there's always the pretty fish and the ugly fish. Depending if you like your guests, like I like my guests, I'll give her the pretty fish. And I'm gonna move my fish onto a plate. On a separate plate, add your finished apple fennel shallot slaw to act as a bed for the cooked sea bass. And for our final touch, go ahead and grab your fennel stalk from earlier and pull some sprigs to act as a garnish on top of this sea bass. Oh, beautiful. All right, guys, and there you have it. Finally, our dish is completed. Everything coming together so beautifully in unison here. We have the different colors almost symbolizing the different seasons in the game. We have the bass, the pear, and the apple, which, of course, all with an Animal Crossing are things that you can grab.